Today we venture into the untold story of liquid metal. We normally talk about how liquid metal and delitting improved thermals and overclocking headroom by allowing for higher V-core at lower temperatures, but today we're going to show you how liquid metal allows for a reduction in noise levels by a perceived 2x, while still allowing equivalent thermals to stock TIM, but with higher clocks overall. That'll be our concluding chart for today. The rest will be power and thermals for the Intel i7-8086K. Before that, this video is brought to you by NZXT's new H500 case, which we recently found to have an impressively effective cooling setup that is entirely negative pressure when stock. The H500 is the successor of the S340 and S340 Elite, offering high build quality that's all steel and glass, and cable management features that are also top class for this $70 compact mid-tower case. The H500 is a part of NZXT's new H-Series lineup, which also features options for mini ITX, micro ATX, and full ATX builds. Learn more at the link in the description below. Originally when asked if or when we would review the 8086K, we basically said, no, we're not going to. It's kind of pointless. And that still stands because ultimately it's an i7-8700K, except it's pre-selected. So these are the highest binning 8700Ks. That's it. That's really the whole difference of the CPU with the 8086K. So everything else, gaming performance, all that stuff stands for the 8700K. It's the same exact processor except for overclocking results. And we decided to do an overclocking live stream, which will be already done by the time this video goes up, uh, where we basically bin the processor and see what it can achieve. So we decided might as well do some delitting thermals and noise testing while we're at it and use this processor as a vessel to prove an important point that is overlooked with liquid metal, which is that liquid metal isn't just good at improving your overclocking headroom, reducing thermals, allowing higher V-core. It's also good at just keeping the same thermals with lower fan speeds. You can do the trade-off and end up with significantly lower noise levels. And that is kind of an untold side of liquid metal and something we want to talk about today. So the 8086K, some background. Intel made a limited amount of these. It's not that limited. We know how many it is and it's a lot. So not super limited, but they made, uh, they basically pre-selected a bunch of 8700Ks and that's what the 8086 is for a good bit more money. The bigger takeaway again here is fan speeds for liquid metal. We're using Thermal Grizzly Conductonaut as we normally do. And then we're also doing a, a really important thing here, which is scraping off the silicone adhesive in order to reduce the gap between the dye and the IHS. That's where a lot of the thermal improvement comes from, not just from the liquid metal. So pay attention to that as well. We'll start with power consumption here, go through thermals, and then get to our noise discussion at the end. For power consumption testing, as always, the methodology will be detailed in the article linked in the description below. But for the basics, we measured power consumption at the EPS 12 volt cables going into the motherboard. This measures the CPU power consumption and includes the VRM power consumption as well. It is much more isolated than wall meters and way more accurate than wall meters, but still includes the VRM power consumption in there. Additionally, our test cases include Cinebench single and multi-threaded, indicated by NT and 1T in the charts, Time Spy, Firestrike Physics, Firestrike Combined as a gaming benchmark stand in. It's the same kind of workload split between CPU and GPU as gaming. Blender, which is AVX, Prime 95, 29.2, which is AVX. And we used 8K in place FFTs for Prime 95, 29.2, which is one of the most thermally and power abusive tests you can do. So that will stand as our basically hitting the thermal limits of the CPU test with Blender being a bit more realistic, but still AVX. So Prime 95 is the most abusive. Let's start there for the thermals and the power tests. Running 8K FFTs in place, we started with a complete auto test, including default BIOS settings in the Maximus 10 motherboard and only enabled XMP on our Corsair 3200 kit. The result was 130 watts of power consumption at the EPS 12 volt rails, overclocking trivially to five gigahertz and 1.3 volts, which was sufficient to sustain this clock, resulted in a 194 watt power consumption at the rails. 5.3 gigahertz at 1.45 volts measured 250 watts, getting awfully high at this point, and starting to require some extra help on cooling the VRM. Fortunately, the Maximus board has built up enough VRM that over temperature is not yet a concern. 
Our 5.3 gigahertz and 1.41 volt test did not pass Prime 95 8K, and neither did the test of the 101 BCLK. They both failed this particular application. For Blender, using GN's in-house built, specially tailored CPU benchmark, we measured 92 watt power consumption for the auto configuration. This is relatively close to Intel's advertised TDP. At 5.0 gigahertz and 1.3 volts, we measured just 135 watts, a steep 60 watt drop from the Prime 95 abuse we saw at the same setting. Both are AVX workloads. 5.1 gigahertz though at 1.35 volts drew 149 watts with 5.3 gigahertz at 1.45 volts, pretty high, drawing 198 watts. For Blender, we didn't actually require 1.45 volts, this is just for scaling, though our 5.3 gigahertz tests at 1.41 volts passed and did so successfully this time, consuming 178 watts each, even with 101 BCLK, both of which failed for Prime 95. Firestrike is next, including both the physics standalone test and the combined gaming workload. The combined test is more accurate to CPU power consumption when playing a video game that splits load across the GPU and CPU. The results aren't too distant, with combined often a few percentage points under physics standalone. The most noteworthy results are 5.1 GHz at 1.35 volts, consuming only 105 watts. Because these CPUs are so heavily binned, our volt frequency table allows much leaner power consumption. And here's Time Spy, just if you're curious. This one is more intensive, but is still well under Blender and Prime. Our 5.3 GHz overclock at 1.41 volts passed at 155 watts, but the 101 BCLK configuration failed this test. Cinebench is last. This one shows both multi-threaded, or NT, and single-threaded, or 1T, results for the 8086K. Here we see power consumption scaling up to about 197 watts with our more aggressive voltage provision with 177 watts for the 1.41 volt and 5.3 gigahertz configuration. Compared to stock, our delta is nearly 100 watts versus auto, but performance is significantly uplifted. 5.0 gigahertz at 1.3 volts provides the best mix of processing power and power efficiency at 133 watts. Single threaded consumption skyrockets to 100 watts with the 5.3 gigahertz and 1.45 volt configuration, but otherwise remains under 70 watts for all other tests. The 101 BCLK configuration did not pass this test with the voltage we set it to. For thermal testing, we combined the two solutions, Prime 95 8K FFTs, which again, it's the most abusive in terms of power consumption, which means that it follows that thermals will be higher as a result. Ultimately, that's all that matters. It's how much power is being consumed by the CPU and being output as heat for the cooling solution to soak. In this case, including either liquid metal or the stock thermal paste, which we sometimes refer to as TIM, though they're both technically TIM. So for this one, Prime 95 8K FFTs for the most abuse of thermals, and then Blender for realistic but still high thermals, both of which are AVX. These results will show both delitted and stock thermal results. We used the same top layer of thermal paste for each set of tests with a Kraken X62 cooler maxed out for RPMs. We also tested with Thermal Grizzly Conductor, not liquid metal, applied under the IHS and atop the die. This is something we've done regularly over the past year, and it often provides 10 to 20 degree performance improvements. A lot of the improvement, though, comes from carefully scraping off all the excess silicone adhesive around the borders, but more still comes from the highly thermally conductive liquid metal. Thermal paste is a polymer compound comprised largely of silicone, whereas liquid metal uses indium and gallium to improve thermal conductivity to nearing 70 watts per meter Kelvin. Depends a bit on the composition of the particular liquid metal. They all use slightly different mixtures. Either way, in the 70s for watts per meter Kelvin, thermal conductivity versus 4 for Intel's paste is quite an improvement. We'll link to the Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot tube below in case you want to buy it for your own D-Lit. Let's start with the harder Prime 95 8K test. First, the complete stock auto test measured an average core temperature of 46 degrees Celsius over ambient, meaning that we were in the upper 60s when considering ambient temperatures of about 23 degrees Celsius. This isn't bad at all, and largely is thanks to the low voltage required for an 8086K to hold the stock clocks. Running with thermal paste TIM, that is, at 5.0 gigahertz and 1.35 volts, temperatures increased by about 20 degrees up to 65.6 .6 degrees over ambient. This is from overclocking and overvolting, although the voltage required is modest when considering our 8700K needed 1.4 volts to hold 5 gigahertz. Going to liquid metal completely negated this and brought us down to about 47 degrees over ambient, equal to the complete stock 8086K with TIM when left on auto settings, and yet this one was at 5 gigahertz. 
Core to core deltas weren't as bad as we've seen on other Intel CPUs like the 7980XE. We have a chart for this one for the 8086K. We think that the reduction in core to core deltas is because of the relatively small die size when compared to HEDT CPUs, resulting in tighter thermal performance across the die. For auto testing with Tim, we measured a core to core peak delta of 6 degrees, which is one of the better measurements we've seen. Overclocked with Tim, we measured a core to core delta peak of 10 degrees, which reduced to about 8 degrees with conductinot applied. Let's move on to Blender. With Blender, we measured an average load temperature of 36 degrees over ambient when left to auto and thermal paste, which again, we've labeled as Tim on this chart, despite liquid metal also technically being Tim. With Tim at 5.1 gigahertz and 1.35 volts, that increased 15 degrees up to 51 degrees over ambient. Using Thermal Grizzly Conductinot with the same volt frequency profile, we measured 39 degrees over ambient, a reduction of about 12 degrees from the 5.1 gigahertz and 1.35 volt Tim test. The bigger news here as before is that this also corresponds with only a three degree increase from auto, yet we have a 600 megahertz increase in frequency. With Tim at 5.3 gigahertz and 1.35 volts, which proved stable in Blender but not Prime, we measured a 60 degree over ambient temperature. Liquid metal at the same frequency and voltage, 5.3 and 1.35, measured just 49 degrees, a reduction of 11 degrees Celsius in this test. Finally, to prove a point, we ran an overclock at 5.0 gigahertz with 1.30 volts and fan speeds of just 60%. With this balance of voltage and frequency and using liquid metal, we were able to reduce our noise levels considerably down from 51 dBA to approximately 40 dBA. This acoustic reduction is perceived as slightly greater than 2x to a human due to the logarithmic scale of the decibels and illustrates our biggest point with delitting efforts in this particular CPU. So that's the important thing that we wanted to convey today. Even when dropping 10 dBA off of our CPU fan noise, which is substantial, 10 decibels is roughly perceived as about a 2x change to a human observer because it is logarithmic. And uh, 3 dBA is about where it starts to get pretty noticeable to most people, just for kind of a scale of reference. So even dropping 10 dBA off the CPU fan speeds, we're still able to maintain a 5 gigahertz overclock. Part of that, in large part, actually, is because of the CPU, of course. But outside of silicon quality, you still have cooling quality. And that comes from our D-Lid efforts, where we scrape off the silicone adhesive, which is kind of the unsung hero of this, and then also apply liquid metal to it, which is highly thermally conductive. So 5 gigahertz overclocked with the same temperatures that are about equivalent to the stock clocks with Tim. So that's really the bigger advantage here is if you've never considered liquid metal as a means to do things other than increase your overclock and over voltage headroom, this is kind of the point we're trying to make. 51 dBA to about 40 by delitting and scraping off compound and putting on some better stuff instead. So uh, further, just to kind of note on the 8086K, we're not doing a full review on it. We're greatly looking forward to the live stream, which will be in the past when this video goes up. Should be a lot of fun, but uh, the kind of big thing here with the 8086K, the reason it's worth an overclock live stream and not a review is because of its bin to nature. So this CPU is doing five gigahertz trivially at 1.35 volts. For reference, our 8700K, the first one, could barely do five gigahertz. And if it did, it was at like 1.45 volts in sort of lighter load application. Our later 8700K could do five gigahertz at 1.40 volts, as opposed to five with 1.35 for the 8086K. And then the stock operating voltage is also significantly lower on the 8086K. Is it worth the extra money for an 8086K bin CPU? Probably not. If you have a really specific use for it and you're definitely going to overclock past five gigahertz and you think that is inherently fun to you, sure. But it is not inherently natively better in any meaningful way in terms of gaming performance than an 8700K, hence not bothering to review it because you're really, at that point, all we're doing is testing the OC performance, which we're doing in a live stream anyway. So uh, anyway, that's the big news is the uh, noise reduction, something we haven't actually measured with liquid metal before but have talked about. So hopefully that helps you out with some ideas on what you can do for your build next. As always, go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats for a 4x2 modding surface for PC building. Uh, or you can go to the store and pick up one of our restocked anniversary edition shirts in teal. We finally got a bunch of them in. Thank you for supporting and buying them. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.